good morning to participants welcome to fifth day that is last today uh, 13th session and the session title was solar energy for industrial process heat applications and delivered by professor k sinwas reddy sir department of mechanical engineering iit madras welcome sir uh, online program faculty development program renewable energy for industrial development applications sponsored by atal academy welcome sir and i will give the some introduction about this sir in two minutes sir obtained his phd from iit delhi in the specialization energy studies solar energy and sir published international journals 158 and above and international conference conferences 116 sponsored projects 34 consultancy projects 37 Awards and honors more than ten, patents nine, special lectures delivered abroad one five, India one twenty eight, PhD students guided seventeen, and ongoing with fourteen, MS students guided sixteen, foreign exchange students guided seventeen, and PG st students guided fifty four, and different books published five. So this is the brief introduction about this sir. So once again, welcome, sir, and thank you, sir, for accepting our invitation and making to present here. Over to you, sir. Thank you. I will share my presentation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No sir. It's not coming. No no sir. Okay, this one. Oh, it's not coming. Eh? No, not it, sir. So I present this one. On that hand side, present now it is there, sir. There it was there. Symbol hand, that's right side. Yes, now it is. It's not. Yes, screen open, sir. Open. Okay. It is uh, not it. Oh. Again, it went off. Huh? Yes, sir. Again, back, sir. Okay. This one. There is some problem here. Yes, yes. Now it is. Yeah, some mirror image. Can you see it now? Yes, yes, sir. Fine, sir. So, if you have any problem, please let me know. Sometimes, sir, because I cannot see what is happening at the back. Definitely, definitely, sir. Uh, if you cannot hear me or uh, if you have yeah. any problem in audio or video, please let me know. Definitely, definitely. Me let. Okay. Good morning to all of you. Uh, at the outset, uh, I thank the organizers uh, for inviting me to give a talk uh, here on solar energy for pro industrial process heat applications. Uh, in this uh, ACT pro uh, FDP program on renewable energy for industrial and domestic applications. So I'll give you quickly uh, what is uh, industrial process heat and what is a basic process heat applications, and I'll give you some of those uh, technologies, mainly solar energy technologies, which can be used for process heat. And uh, also, I'll try to give one uh, example how 
the process seed can be used for industrial applications, mainly uh, dairy, rural industries like dairy applications. So uh, I think we are facing several problems. Uh, uh, can you hear me well? Yes, sir. Yeah, we are facing several problems. Uh, those uh, include this energy, water, food, environment, poverty, terrorism, and war, diseases, education, democracy, and population. And uh, here, uh, the most important thing is uh, energy, because now the uh, program is also on energy. So uh, the energy production, the present energy scenario is based on primarily on, uh, on fossil fuels. So therefore, when you discuss about the energy sector now based on fossil fuel energy scenario, obviously we cannot address the problem of uh, energy alone. It has to be energy and environment. So therefore energy and environment can, can go together. And if you look at the first uh, three issues, energy, water, food, um, they, are, they are very important, especially this uh, food, water, clean energy are very important. Uh, for future generations. Why? Because uh, food is uh, very important, the food security is there now. There is a parliament bill. Water uh, everywhere is available, but not drinkable water. So which, uh, because air is there, of course, for human survival, air is also important, but uh, air uh, is available free of cost, whether it's uh, clean air or polluted air. It's a different case, but uh, energy is required for all of this. So, uh, therefore, uh, the energy can solve some of uh, the above problems. And world's energy consumption is uh, growing rapidly uh, and exponentially. Mainly, it's fossil fuel driven, but uh, renewable energy is also coming. So, energy, as I mentioned, it's very important because uh, it also uh, it also is an indicator for uh, industrial development and improving the standard of living, and of course, uh, the economic growth and so on. So therefore, energy is very important, uh, uh, which uh, mainly clean energy is very important for that. I'll give you what is the brief, uh, briefly, what is the energy and how this energy is uh, transformed into useful energy. Energy sources uh, are those uh, which can be grouped into two categories. Uh, uh, the first one is, uh, celestial or income energy. Uh, this energy is uh, reaching the earth from the outer space, uh, which includes uh, solar lunar energies, which, uh, which are referred as a non-depletable. And uh, apart from this, uh, there are other forms of uh, minor energy, energies which are entering into the atmosphere, Earth's atmosphere is the electromagnetic gravitational particle energy from stars, planets, and the moon, and uh, finally the potential energy of meteorites entering into the Earth's atmosphere. So these are uh, which uh, comes from outside the space. So therefore, they are called income or celestial energy. But there are some uh, other energy sources which are already there in the Earth or on the Earth. They are called as uh, capital energy. Uh, these energies uh, are already there. So therefore, mainly uh, it's a uh, geothermal and atomic energy. Uh, geothermal, you know very well, geothermal means the, uh, the heat which is there already in the earth crust, that's called geothermal. And uh, if you go to the center of the earth, still it is in molten state. So, and uh, therefore, uh, wherever it's uh, uh, less deeper sources are available, then they can be tapped, geothermal energy can be tapped. But the most important is atomic energy, which is uh, mainly the form of chemical, uh, they are like fossil fuels and nuclear is a nuclear fuel. So therefore, uh, these are uh, very important and we are uh, using extensively these capital energy. As I mentioned that it, uh, these energies have their uh, adverse effect on environment. So therefore, one needs to be uh, very cautious about the conversion of these energy sources. Apart from that, the Reserve reserves, energy reserves, what are their potential? So if you look at them, they are broadly classified again into four categories. Uh, their 
renewable or non depletable which are solar wind biomass and uh, ocean and uh, fossil fuels coal oil gas and uh, of course nuclear in the form of fusion or uh, fusion fission or fusion uh, these are the other uh, forms of reserves and if you look at uh, energy system hierarchy the energy sources are transformed into uh, energy carriers and subsequently used at the energy equipment and if you look at the energy sources primarily they are uh, fossil and renewable and nuclear uh, you have uh, one part here and this is another part and of course these are uh, mainly referred as the fossil uh, fuel so uh, these are transformed into a more cleaner uh, carriers energy carriers the primary energy carrier high quality energy carrier is the electricity and of course the other liquid fuels like petrol and other fuels also that they can be used subsequently for mobility or uh, buildings and consumer choice whichever you want this is a, a typical energy system hierarchy and if you look at the global energy potential uh, there are uh, different energy sources just we now uh, just now we discussed coal uranium oil natural gas wind biomass hydro geothermal wave and tidal these are the different forms of energy you can see that they are represented by a circle and the corresponding potential are given here uh, so then each circle will represent its uh, magnitude but um, if you look at that this is the one which is uh, uh, world's energy consumption now and this consumption can be scattered by all these energy forms okay but uh, if you look at that as i mentioned here uh, as i mentioned here uh, these uh, energy sources most of them are fossil fuels and they are limited in source but you have a bigger circle here which is uh, much bigger and this is the solar energy which can be used for this world's energy consumption Uh, most uh, sustainable way as compared to the other energy resources and if you look at the energy demand as i mentioned that energy is one of the indicators to know the standard of living and uh, and will be ness of a person or the country so therefore if you look at this uh, the energy demand and prosperity wherever the energy high energy demand is are uh, highly uh, developed uh, locations and uh, wherever it is uh, this is a night time uh, lights Uh, it's uh, uh, earth is uh, at night so wherever it's highly illuminated they are under energy demand and prosperity and in contrast to this there are several places uh, uh, under under uh, uh, uniform or non uniform illuminations and they are under uh, there are of course their population and other things are very high so therefore in spite of that uh, uh, the demand is much lower so therefore so most of these countries are in, under energy poverty and if you look at this this is a map uh, some countries are missing here and here and here and here so these are uh, energy rich countries but here they this is uh, area where energy is a major issue uh, you, about 1.6 billion people do not have access to the electricity 80% of them will die in this area if you look at these are countries here um several million people do not have access to the electricity and several million people um, rely rely on uh, biomass as the primary energy as i mentioned primary energy is uh, see for human survival uh, three important things are uh, air water and food air is available free of cost and water is also some extent is available but otherwise in most of the cases it's um, bought out because we are buying the water but the um, food food is uh, one important uh, requirement and the food uh, we cannot uh, eat it in a natural form so therefore it requires food processing i am going to discuss one of the food processing like the dairy industry so uh, this requires uh, energy uh, food processing because we cannot eat raw food like raw rice so it needs to be processed for first elementary process is cooking so cooking requires energy and now you know that uh, cooking uh, more 
um, large portion of these people are using the firewood for cooking application, not gas. So therefore, it's very important, and uh, the energy sustainability is more important in the, for any country. And um, what happens is, uh, see, uh, the energy sustainability, achieving energy sustainability is very important. Energy security is also another important aspect. Uh, if you look at in India, we have all um, uh, energy consumption, mainly fossil fuel consumption. Uh, if you look at it's uh, coal, oil, gas, and uh, we import coal, all forms of uh, fossil fuels, as well as nuclear. We import coal, we import uh, oil, we import gas, and coal is uh, imported uh, from uh, Indonesia and Australia and so on. Now, I think some of these power plants have a problem with uh, the coal. Indian coal, um, largest, uh, I think it's a uh, port India, uh, Indian coal production and consumption is. Uh, I think it's substantial and it's a, a fourth largest in the world, but still we import the coal because of the low grade heat, low grade uh, coal. So if you look at uh, the oil, oil is a major uh, import for us and uh, it's a, a massive consumption of this oil and a lot of uh, foreign exchange goes for that. And uh, we import oil and uh, we import cars, this uh, car technologies. We have uh, different car technologies and uh, we consume it and pollute Indian environment. So therefore, if there is a problem, if there is a, uh, any political, geopolitical unrest uh, on energy sources, the, if you see the import coal, oil from the Middle East, so if there is any uh, supply disruption, supply disruption may result in uh, this uh, power landing into this energy sustainability zone. So therefore, if we have a money, we can buy a car, but um, we have to also buy the fuel. But if the fuel is not available indigenously, locally, ultimately, it will become unsustainable. So therefore, energy sustainability is very important. And uh, if you look at this earth, it is bluish color, and then it is surrounded by the atmosphere. Uh, if you look at from the distance, the earth looks uh, bluish color and it's surrounded by the atmosphere. So, and uh, we are uh, using fossil fuels and because of the fossil fuel consumption, we are emitting radiation into the, into the atmosphere. And because of uh, this uh, pollutants into the atmosphere, uh, what is happening is, uh, you know, that the uh, air pollution, water pollution and other uh, soil pollution, so many things are happening. So because of the anthropogenic consumption of energy, that means uh, anthropogenic by human consumption of uh, fossil fuels. So therefore we are literally imbalancing the Earth's atmosphere. That is why you can see a lot of uh, problems, uh, not only health related problems like uh, global climate change problems. Also you have seen um, somewhere you have too much water, rainy uh, rains or uh, some other places is too much dry. So therefore, there's a global climate change is happening because of the imbalance of the atmosphere due to fossil fuel consumption. We are literally overloading the system of the atmosphere and we are burning up the atmosphere, um, burning up the Earth's uh, uh, ecosystem by consuming fossil fuel indiscriminately. Therefore, there is a, it's important uh, that uh, if any overloaded system, uh, that means the atmosphere is overloaded with pollutant because Atmosphere should consist of certain uh, compositions of the gases or certain fraction of the gases. And uh, because if you, any uh, concentration, any uh, concentration which is higher than the required of any particular gas will result in imbalance of the Earth's atmosphere, uh, which result in the global climate change and local regional uh, environmental degradations. So therefore, any overloaded system looks like this. If you put too much load into the atmosphere, what happens? It gets imbalanced. So therefore, it's important to have a, a, a resource sustainability, and um, the resources are limited, and they are uh, with the prime um, limited supplies at some locations, and it's highly uh, unevenly distributed across the world. Some areas we have excess uh, resources, some areas we don't have resources at all. But then these resources need to be used judiciously with the 
um, keeping the sustainability concept because sustainability means keep the resources for the future generation. So if you look at that, this, these uh, resources, I, I'm referring to the energy resources, mainly fossil fuels, they are limited. And if you start tapping from the bottom, the, this uh, level will come down and one day it will become empty. So uh, as long as you can use it uh, uh, for your requirement without any technology. So therefore, these resources can be made sustainable uh, by appropriate technology or development of appropriate technology. So therefore, one should need uh, a technology which keeps these resources for the future generation. We can take our own share parallelly and these sources will be for the future generation. So therefore, in order to take at the, this level, you need to have a technology. So this technology, as far as the energy resources are concerned, it's a renewable energy technology or solar technology. So solar technology keeps the resources for um, future generation and we can use our own share. That's why the future uh, generation says that there's only earth, we have to take care of it. So then uh, what are the possible uh, solution? The energy sustainability is a major issue here. Energy uh, sustainability can be attained by energy efficiency, proper mix of energy sources, and uh, renew make use of renewable energy sources in the answer. So what you do is, is First step is improve the energy efficiency. In what your, in the classic example for improving the energy efficiency is you, you, you look at the lighting system. Lighting system, uh, earlier, maybe 20, 30 years back, we had the incandescent lamps, then subsequently fluorescent lamps have come up, then, then uh, compact fluorescent lamps. Now I think uh, um, all, uh, all uh, LEDs and so on. So there's a lot of improvement in uh, energy efficiency of these illumination. Similarly, this is at the uh, end use, but we can also improve the efficiency in power generation, improving the performance efficiency of a power plant, uh, in, in improving the efficiency of a process heat industry, and so on. Uh, then, uh, but that is not enough. We have uh, certain limitations on improving the efficiency, uh, but uh, there are uh, other things because these resources are di highly diversified. These resources need to be properly mixed and uh, according to the availability of the energy sources, they need to be used effectively in, in an integrated fashion. So that is the thing, but uh, I, as I mentioned that uh, these resources are limited, so therefore obviously when you go for uh, only solution is the renewable energy technologies. So there are uh, relay, reliable energy supply is a major concern now and uh, there are uh, certain barriers to bridge this welfare gap and those, but, energy supply uh, uh, barriers and gaps are very important here. Those include a reliable energy supply can uh, be dependent on the transportation bottlenecks, increase in energy demand, uh, domestic unrest, energy investment, market deregulation, uh, energy price volatility, and uh, technological development, geopolitical instability, and uh, increase in energy import. Just now I mentioned that almost 70% of the oil is imported in India. So therefore, if you import that way and there is a problem uh, like uh, unrest, political unrest, we have seen internationally. See, there are sa sanctions by the, the this uh, US and um, uh, Iran for, for supplying the fuel. And there are several other problems which may result in supply disruption. Therefore, energy security is very important. The energy security is the continuous and uninterrupted availability of energy to a specific country or region. Uh, the, the, that's called energy security. But the security of energy supply uh, conducts a crucial role in decision uh, that are related to the formulation of energy policy strategies. And also threats for uh, energy security can be due to natural, technological, uh, human causes which lead to disruption or damage to the energy system. So therefore, see, I have mentioned the several, uh, uh, almost eight to nine, uh, uh, factors which place energy supply in any uh, issue in these uh, uh, topics or in these uh, parameters, obviously we cannot achieve energy security. So therefore, uh, these uh, it's a very important. Therefore, self-reliance of energy uh, indigenously is better. So as far as India is concerned, um, uh, renewable energy could be one of the best option for that. So therefore, there are several technological options, mainly, as I mentioned, that the fossil fuel consumption need to 
the greenhouse concentrations in the atmosphere. But uh, if we, in order to uh, avoid these greenhouse gases, uh, renewable energy is one of the aspects, but uh, the, uh, this is not the only single uh, technology or policy can do it. So therefore, it uh, is different from, uh, for different regions, uh, for different markets, for different scale of requirements, so different infrastructures, different uh, technology timing and uh, preferences and sources. So therefore, there are several technologies like uh, going for vehicles. We are talking about now uh, hydrogen fuel vehicles, biofuel vehicles, the electric vehicles, and improving the energy efficiency. That cannot be a single uh, option. Then uh, this could be one of the factors which stabilizes the greenhouse effects or greenhouse gas concentration in the atmosphere. Going for the building sector, building sector is, uh, as you know, that it's growing rapidly, uh, real estate sector. And, uh, and uh, nowadays, these buildings are highly energy intensive buildings. So therefore, um, you know that uh, especially in India, without air conditioner, we cannot um, have a, uh, expect a building. So therefore, in buildings, uh, the energy consumption has also rapidly increased uh, in recent times, and uh, it becomes uh, very energy intensive. Uh, systems. So therefore, net zero emission buildings uh, and industrial uh, efficiency and uh, CHP that combined heat and power are very important and nuclear, advanced nuclear power generation, then uh, apart from the carbon sequestration is another thing, advanced grid, because now uh, in India also the government is spending a lot of money on advanced grid, improving the um, transmission distribution uh, network, because avoiding the losses due to transmission and distribution biofuels and power generation. And of course, finally, the renewable energy technologies can play an important role in energy security or reducing the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So if you look at energy reserves um, um, across the world, these are, I have already mentioned um, in the previous case, they are by circles, but I'm putting here into the blocks here. Uh, but there I have shown, I had showed you potential, but here, I'm showing not only the potential or their limitations of, uh, or their extendability in uh, time span. And these are the different uh, uh, fossil fuels and nuclear fuels, and they can cater to the requirement of this, which is uh, present demand. But they can extinct, uh, or if you consume with the same rate, they will be, uh, becomes uh, minimum uh, resources by these respectively these number of years. But in contrast to that, we have a massive solar uh, radiation which can easily cater the requirement. If you represent this uh, in terms of years, uh, especially the oil is a major concern because now we are talking about uh, uh, oil, uh, it can last maximum of 40 to 45 years. So after that, uh, you see each generation is, uh, see, each generation is about 27 years. So we can see that next generation may not be see the uh, oil. So therefore, unless uh, we come up with uh, alternative options. So therefore, it's important to come up with an alternative options. So now uh, the pr process heat uh, power generation, because the quality of energy is uh, very important. Um, you know that um, if you see that uh, there are different types of energy, are there different forms of energy? You know that um, uh, types of energy. Say, if you are, if I ask, what is the classification of energy? As I mentioned, celestial and uh, capital energy. Now they are basically sources. But uh, if you look at the forms, you have mechanical, electrical, chemical, uh, ma magnetic, and, uh, and so on, and say several forms of these. But if you look at that, uh, all of these uh, from uh, among these, uh, this electricity is the most highest quality of energy. You are all mechanical engineers, you know the difference between heat and uh, work. So uh, heat is uh, uh, one form of uh, energy, work is another form of energy. But if you compare them, uh, work is more valuable than heat because you can completely convert work into heat, but whereas the reverse is not possible. So therefore, here if you look at this uh, power referred as electricity and process heat is uh, heat. But then converting uh, heat into power and back to heat is not a good option. So therefore, wherever heat requirement is there, we have to use heat requirement. Whereas wherever it's a power generation is there, uh, we have to use that. If you look at the Indian industry, uh, and two thirds of the energy consumption is in the form of process heat. 
So uh, process heat has a, a large potential in industrial uh, applications. Mainly, uh, as I mentioned, that if you compare the total energy, it's uh, almost two thirds of the uh, total energy consumption. I will mention what is the exactly process heat and what is the power generation and how we can uh, do that. So utilization of heat. Heat is uh, uh, it is obtained by either burning of fuels or from the renewable energy. So the difference between process heat and power is uh, the process heat is any heat which is uh, less than 260 degrees is referred as a process heat. And if it is a power generation, any heat can be used, uh, any heat which is above 60 degrees can be used for power generation. And as you know, this power generation, uh, Rankine cycle, Brayton cycle and heat engine is used to convert uh, uh, heat, heat from uh, heat to the electrical energy by, the, by, of course, first mechanical and subsequently electrical by these heat engines. And the heat engines are by various cycles. You know very well all these, Rankine, Sterling, Brayton, and hybrid cycles. But whereas if you look at the process heat, uh, it's a wide variety of applications, including hot water, drying of food, cooking, desalination, refrigeration. Uh, the most important industrial process should uh, using uh, heat uh, at a mean temperature level of uh, uh, level are these processes. Okay. There, there is sterilizing, pressurizing, uh, pressurizing, uh, drying, hydro uh, hydrolyzing, distillation, evaporation, wa washing, cleaning, polymerization. These are some of the processes where the industrial process heat can be used. And if you look at the industrial process heat, uh, mainly commonalities to allow them to group into following categories where the fluid heating, calcining uh, and drying, curing and forming and of course some other industrial process operations. Uh, if you look at broadly, uh, there are uh, different uh, processes like fluid uh, heating, you have so many things, air heating, cap, uh, reformation, uh, distillation, fluid cracking, hydro treatment, liquid heating, quenching, uh, reforming, uh, wish breaking, there are some. And you can use calcining in cement industry, coke, uh, calcining, minerals, calcining, uh, mainly oral calcining. These are the, some of the uh, calcining machine. Whereas drying, you have a crude oil, food, there is a, uh, I'm not listing out this, there are hundreds of these. And similarly, curing and forming, we have ceramic industries, clay industries, glass industries, and so on industries here. These are the process heat requirement. And generally this process heat is uh, you produced from uh, burning of fossil fuels. Suppose if we replace this uh, uh, fossil fuel by solar energy, we can uh, use for different applications here. And um, in fact, we have been uh, at IIT Madras, we have been associated with several process industries and their uh, repowering and uh, uh, retrofitting of the solar energy systems. And uh, I here you see that uh, temperatures for different industrial processes like a dairy industries, there are several, several processes here and their temperature ranges are given here. Uh, the the uh, tinning for textiles, paper, chemical, meat, beverages, and floor byproducts, floors and byproducts, timber byproducts, and the bricks and brick uh, blocks, plastics, so many things are there. And if you look at that, the minimum temperature is somewhere about 60 degrees, and the maximum temperature is somewhere 260 degrees here. So, therefore, also there are several industrial process heat. Uh, applications uh, which requires heat in the range of 60 to 260 degrees Celsius. And uh, I will give you uh, in my talk, uh, apart from renewable energy technology, I'll give you one application of dairy, but uh, we have done several, uh, including paint industries uh, and uh, even ceramic industries with uh, Murgapa Margan thermal ceramics. Uh, say, uh, in Chennai, we, did, uh, uh, we have given a solution based on uh, this one, Paribare and all these. And then uh, mining industry, uh, mining how mining energy conservation can be done. And then we have um, uh, power plant, thermal power generation, uh, as well as uh, uh, this. Uh, uh, one of the, another process heat application is in uh, uh, starch and glucose industries. 
the, where the, the starch glucose is produced, like or you can say it's a similar to chemical industry, like a uh, soaps uh, and uh, other synthetic rubbers and so on. And uh, of course, there are wide variety of applications. I'm not listing out these, but uh, wanted to make a mention that it uh, has a wide range of uh, industrial processing applications of this. And how a typical industrial process heat works? A typical process heat is like this. You have a uh, thermal processing of the products, but it is supplied by the fuel. And uh, sometimes we go for electricity uh, because more control we need to for, uh, we may go for electricity like induction furnace or hot furnace resistance furnace. Here the coal oil gas are produced and then you have exhaust gases after this and then um, material uh, handling from material starts from here and goes as a final material here here. So there are heat losses involved. And uh, the, if you consume fossil fuel, you have emission uh, as well. Some heat recovery is also waste heat recovery happens here to get it back to the system. This is a typical. So now, uh, if I look at the solar uh, process heat application, means that this part is replaced by uh, solar system and the process heater remains same. So typical um, uh, process heating uh, consists of very uh, uh, different components and it's a typical, this part is the boiler component, combustion takes place and the, these are different process heaters and at different levels and the, the steam is used at different uh, uh, heat steaming means in the form of heat uh, can be used for various uh, applications here. So, uh, but in contrast to that, any thermal power plant, uh, you know that um, as, because I'm giving you the difference between uh, power generation and the process heat, and you know that uh, there is a power plant, mainly uh, thermal power plant. Uh, it produces electricity and it's transported to the uh, end use here by step up and step down transformers. And this part is a, an important application, an important issue here. Power, it is a, a heat engine which works between two reservoirs and it converts into work. And so, therefore, a typical um, typical uh, power plant is the Rankine cycle based thermal power plant. And mainly, the coal is uh, is a major fuel for this. So it is represented by this ranking cycle, as you know very well, and uh, then you can find out what is the work done by this, under this, and its efficiency. So uh, this power plant is not so simple. So it's uh, very complex like this. You have, uh, uh, if uh, we replace this boiler by solar system, then it becomes a solar power plant. Power base power plant, if it's replaced by this, this one. So then how, what is this uh, uh, solar on energy, how we can use it? Solar energy is called renewable energy and uh, we have uh, this uh, solar energy can uh, continuously interact with the environment. And uh, when you use the uh, solar energy for conversion of uh, electrical energy, then you may need a device or heat energy. We can, may, may, need a device and this device converts uh, solar into heat or electricity. But uh, there are a lot of uh, potential here, solar radiation potential, uh, almost 1.2 into 10 to the power 17 watts is available and it's uh, subsequently transformed into other forms of uh, uh, energy, renewable energies. So oh, all other renewable energy like uh, biofuels, hydropower, wind power, all these are, uh, are manifestation of the solar energy. All other renewable uh, energies are manifestation of solar energy. We have a good potential in India here of solar energy. This is a condition for process heat and power generation. Uh, we can uh, you can look at that. Uh, I have already mentioned there is a solar energy can be directly converted into indirectly converted into various other forms: water, power, wind, uh, water, power, wind. Power. Hello. Uh, hello, sir. Is it okay or any problem? No, sir. Okay, sir. Fine, sir. Continue, sir. Yeah. Any question? From participants? From uh, participants? Because I heard some voice, that's why I'm saying. Okay, no problem. Okay. Continue, so, sir. So then biomass and uh, biomass is uh, actually photosynthesis here and ocean energy. But the other side, car, direct conversion, this process heat in the form of thermal steam. Photovoltaics also there with you all mechanical engineers. We have a limited uh, scope 
to contribute in this area because basically physics, electronics, and so on. But uh, we have a major role here in process heat and power generation applications. And uh, I have already mentioned that power generation uh, is uh, above 60 degrees, whereas process heat is between 60 to 260 degrees. And it's uh, these are the applications, water heating, drying, cooking, distillation, refrigeration, greenhouses. And a typical uh, solar uh, energy for process heat is a solar collector, which converts solar energy into heat, and that heat can be used for the this process heat loads. Either it's a uh, space heating, or hot water purpose, or industrial process heat, any one of these. And uh, in order to improve the reliability, we may go, have, go for storage, and uh, sometimes we can use auxiliary systems. Uh, in fact, power generation is slightly different. Uh, uh, here, uh, the, it's the solar collectors and then energy storage, but there will be a cycle in between here. That is a ranking cycle or any other cycle, and depending upon the temperature of this. Then it's supplied to the electrical road. Either it could be good grid connected or standalone system. Then the solar uh, system looks like this, uh, a, a power generation here. And whenever you have extra energy that can be used for uh, to fulfill to the uh, requirement beyond the sunshine hours, you can produce more energy and then use it. This is a typical uh, solar uh, power plant. But then in contrast to this, it's, it looks very complex here, high temperature power plant. Um, then we can go for cogeneration also. Cogeneration means uh, uh, combined uh, heat and uh, electricity, heat and power. And um, most of the, these sugar industries where the process heat is available, sugar, paper, cement industries, they require both electricity as well as the heat. So in such case, the cogeneration is an attractive option in this process heat application. So I'm not going in detail of this because you know what is a cycle and how power generation works. And then uh, it's a, a process heat application. It can be low temperature process heat. Uh, maybe it's a simple is a pool heating. See, you should look at swimming pool. Uh, swimming pools are uh, mainly used only during, uh, with the, during uh, summer. But in uh, cold climates, uh, most of the time, the uh, pool, pool, swimming pool water is much co co cooler. They, we cannot go and uh, use that. So therefore, in order to uh, make it use for throughout the year, uh, maybe solar energy can be used to uh, heat up the water. Because why solar energy? Why? Because in swimming pools, uh, there's a large mass of water. Uh, but uh, you don't need very high temperature. It's only just five degrees or 10 degrees. We have to make the water warm. So for that warm, here the heat is, heat, amount of heat is very large, whereas the temperature is very small. Whereas if you look at power generation, electricity, like thermal power plants, where the temperature is 500 degrees, more than 500 degrees. So there uh, it's an important because you need both quality and quantity are important here. Here, the quality is not a big issue. Quantity is a major thing here. Other uh, options are like this. Uh, you can go for swimming pool to, made, to make it more uh, attractive throughout the, because swimming pool is a very expensive um, system. And if it is uh, not utilized for throughout the year, it's a, under the capacity factor is very small. Only a few months we can use. So therefore, it's very important. Another important uh, process heat application is the cooling. That's air conditioning and refrigeration. And generally, if you go for solar thermal, thermal based cooling is an important thing, very large scale vapor absorption system. And uh, you can also go for other processes like uh, different processes, different, uh, like I was telling about tannery, like leather industries. Uh, we give some solution to the leather, some uh, textile industries, um, uh, as I mentioned, uh, that um, dairy industries and so on. So these are some of the processes. Uh, Processes. So, uh, if you, as a part of that, uh, because here solar energy technology is very important here, uh, so therefore we have developed several solar energy technologies as part of processes, industrial processes. I'll go quickly some of these. As I mentioned in the beginning, arts also indigenous technology. We have Indian technology is important. Uh, if, if you import technology, most of the foreign exchange goes for the technology transfer. 
now you are talking about the electric vehicles and uh, uh, solar power generation so if you develop indigenous power generation technologies or indigenous processing technologies the the, uh, uh, the country will get benefit out of that so therefore uh, indigenous technology development is uh, most important and most of your uh, teachers and scientists and so on so therefore uh, try to develop your own technology for the country as a part of that uh, at iit madras uh, we developed about more than 20 technologies some of them are commercially uh, licensed and given to the industries some of them are under uh, this process and some of them are more of academic interest so our approach is a 4d approach design dev development demonstration and deployment uh, and through 4e approach uh, 4d through 4e uh, 4e means uh, energy exergy environment and economic analysis i am not reading out this uh, uh technologies i have just listed up this is my group uh, and uh, iit madras it's my lab solar energy research facility these are my students uh, uh, so therefore our approach is the design of a solar energy system mainly process heat applications this is a, a solar dish collector and trough trough and then so on. and this is another view of this is here so you have a dish collector system which concentrates solar energy uh, uh, solar energy uh, from uh, sun to here it comes here and reflects back here so uh, all the radiation which comes and reflects here and and uh, this concentrates solar energy into a small part where which creates a process heat that is uh, here ray sun it can produce up to 640 degrees of process heat at 67% and this requires two axis tracking to uh, run drive the this from morning to evening as the sun moves from here to here so uh, it's an optical thermal uh, lma system and uh, which produce high temperature high uh, pressure heat then we have a photovoltaic system with tracking which is a small system and here our contribution is tracking development and then uh, we have desalination system for a large scale operations also and uh, the another one is a parabolic trough it's a similar to this but this is a two two axis tracking it requires a single axis tracking from moving from east to west here and the sun's uh, uh, radiation uh, comes here and reflects here onto the receiver here you can see that receiver how brightly illuminated so it requires two axis tracking with this uh, the comparatively we get uh, less temperature here uh, you can see Uh, then uh, the another one is uh, concentrating photovoltaics which is uh, a combination of both is a combined heat and power it, it, uh, chp combined heat and power both heat is produced about two thirds and one third is the electricity production uh, here also the there is a cells placed in this uh, tube below this here and the solar radiation comes here and reflects onto this and uh, the cells uh, heat can be removed by circulating water from this tank here it comes like this and then heat it up here and we have solar energy uh, instruments and so on if you look at another view as i mentioned earlier it's a 4d approach 4d means design development demonstration and deployment so therefore most of our uh, systems are in a demonstration scale uh, you can see with respect to this person they are massive and this is a lab you know, which you saw just now this is a our lab in that lab we are our approach is a higher level uh, because so that the industries can take it forward and implement it this is a parabolic disclosure view these are electric etc systems evacuated tubular collector etc means evacuated tubular collector this is steam ics steam means transparent insulation material ic is means integrated collector storage system this alienation is there collector collector so many things are there and uh, we have commercialized this dish and one company in hyderabad has taken of course they, we have given to four five companies but oh, i am showing one of them this is in uh, a pharmaceutical industry for process heat applications uh, this is in hyderabad uh, uh, the the company name is genetex uh, international private limited and uh, the, you can see that this is a massive dish uh, the solar energy is concentrated here you can see the bright uh, spot here another company here the, this is a trough uh, it reflects radiation here on the receiver and this is a chennai based company this uh, santar and we are also working on the hydrogen energy storage uh, for that uh, we need to have a, a hydrogen reactor 
uh, and so on. And here methane is converted into hydrogen and uh, uh, carbon, black carbon. So methane is sent into the reactor. One of my students has designed this reactor for uh, analysis and you'll get carbon and hydrogen. And this is a typical reactor. Uh, and this is what you have just now seen here also. Another closer view of that is here. This is the concentrated flux. And uh, the fluid is circulated here like that and brought it back and goes into the, uh, the into this pharmaceutical compound. And uh, these are parabolic stuff in our um, uh, lab. This is another, the one which you showed earlier and seen earlier was different. This is an extended, this is in our classroom complex in IIT Madras, top of the classroom complex. This, uh, these are massive systems. So if you put them on the rooftop, then there's a problem of instability uh, to the structure and there's a leakage problem. So therefore we raise that into the higher level and a separate foundation is made here. You can see that it's almost at the crane, crane, crane level or beyond the crane, you can see how big this is. So it's on fourth floor uh, of the, fourth or fifth floor of the classroom complex. And you can see how big it is with respect to the people who are walking around. And this is another uh, uh, LFR system mainly for process heat applications here, and of course, power generation. And these are linear frontal reflectors. These are blend mirrors. Here you can see several small, small mirrors are placed here, and they are tracked single axis uh, from morning to evening. And if the sun is here, the so ray reflected back to here, and uh, uh, you can see here reflects here, like that. But if uh, this sun, uh, you can say if the sun is somewhere here. So if the same sun can come here and reflect back here, so like that. So this is these are all tracked and uh, you can see them. Uh, there is energy storage here and uh, uh, energy storage here. And it's a, a storage integrated solar LFR collector with 50 kilowatt uh, uh, capacity and it produces 50 bar and 350 to 400 degrees Celsius. And it is a, it can give both heat for cooking, desalination, and uh, uh, air conditioning plus uh, power generation of a school. This is a school uh, patashala which is located in uh, Valipuram, Valipuram, Kanchipuram district. And uh, we have we do a lot of uh, inside uh, uh, inside that is indoor systems like uh, under uh, operating under simulated conditions. This is a two-phase system. This is a, uh, you see, solar energy is generated by the lights and uh, it falls into the, to check how the flux distribution is happening here. That is what is there from here. And we'll see, we'll put the receiver and test it in an indoor condition. And this is our flow condition. If you send fluid, how a, a fluid goes into the receiver and comes back. And then if there's a multi-pass, what, how this can be done. And you look at that, this is a, one of a, a similar system, linear frontal reflector. These are the mirrors, such a long mirrors, and the receiver is on the top here, you can see. So this uh, solar energy comes here and reflects onto the receiver here. So the water uh, is taken from here and then onto the receiver, it goes all the way around here and then comes back and then comes here. And then you can see here, this is the steam which is produced superheated steam, which can be used for process heating. And the picture of this, you can see here, how the steam is produced, high pressure, high temperature steam coming out of it. This is a prototype for one kilowatt, one megawatt uh, solar thermal power generation. And uh, in fact, later we subsequently worked on, uh, now uh, this is a new system. This is a, again, uh, this is a circular dish, which uh, focus radiation into this. This is a, a square dish. Uh, which focus, sorry, which focus radiation here onto the uh, receiver here. This is used for CPV application. This is for the thermal application. And uh, this uh, back side, we have an air conditioning unit. Uh, I think in, in India's first, uh, uh, smallest, uh, uh, like window air conditioning type of, it's about three ton air conditioner using vapor absorption system uh, with the solar energy. It's in lab and one of um, a couple of students are working on this. And uh, we have a integrated collector storage system. I told Team ICS, uh, 
it replaces conventional hot water system and so on. This is a typical hot water uh, case. You can find information on these papers. And uh, another thing is uh, uh, design of a design development of a tracking system for a PV because a tracking system improves the power generation. So therefore, tracking is very important in uh, system level optimization and configuration. Uh, we we came up with a small tracking system and uh, it's a BTEC one BTEC student developed this uh, and uh, it's a vision. So now uh, we have uh, this linear scenario. You have seen that um, uh, with CSP, CPV system in the previous case is similar to that. Maybe closure view. Solar cells are placed on the receiver here, but uh, these cells need to be cooled, and then the water circulation is done here, and it comes back here. And apart from that, there are lens-based systems which uh, produce electricity as well as heat. But that heat uh, sometimes we may dissipate into the atmosphere by Heat sinks are through fins, and this is the such system. It's a lens; it concentrates and through refraction, so it refracts. Other systems reflect. This is a reflection. Yes, and uh, because when you go for tracking system, it's uh, where you process heat is even sometimes 60, 70 degrees or 90, 80, 90 degrees. In such case, we don't need a complex uh, system. Uh, it's it can be simple, be a low cost system. So therefore. Uh, they can be even need not be track a tracking type of system. You can go for non-tracking. One of the application uh, process heat application is uh, uh, for desalination and uh, textile industry. So we come up with a, a static 3D hyperbolic concentrator uh, mainly for desalination. Uh, here, this is a concentrator with solar energy concentrate onto the receiver here, and we have done a lot of optical analysis based on that. We can get the image focal image here. And then uh, appropriate uh, heat exchanger is designed. This uh, heat exchanger mainly we call receiver. That's called helical receivers. And then if you look at that, it looks like this. These are uh, elliptical aperture and hyperbolic uh, hyperbolic uh, configuration. So solar radiation comes here and ref reflects here. And this is a elliptical. So sun sun moves in the east west direction. So therefore. Even morning, it can capture as well as the evening, it can capture. So therefore, it has a wider acceptance angle. So no need to uh, track it. it. It's a passive system. So when uh, there is no tracking system, obviously there is no motor, no sensor, no power. So therefore, it's a simple uh, system. And we have done this um, analysis. And the desalination is one of the uh, another important, uh, especially in Chennai, solar uh, desalination uh, of uh, sea water. Sea water is available, but the water uh, requirement is high. So this is a typical multi-phase solar desalination system. The solar energy uh, is absorbed on this flat plate collector. This is an evaporation condensation unit. This is uh, same as this collector, but this is same as this. So you can see there are different stages. In these stages, the evaporation condensation happens, and then the water is collected. Um, uh, pure water is collected in this, and then the brine collected here. So we have done with the several stage, and the yield is about 15 to 25 kg per meter square per day, and there is 40 to 60 percent efficiency. This can handle both saline water, fresh water, brackish water, brine water, any water it can handle. Whether it can be used not only for uh, sea water desalination, but also used for uh, waste water treatment also. So this is another uh, vertical type of solar cells where the uh, energy is effectively used. The solar energy falls into this, and then the other side also it comes. It's a vertical, so that uh, the sun moves from east to west here, and sun falls here, 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 wherever you want. And it is uh, studied and come up with a better uh, yields and better year-round performance is attained. One of the PhD students worked on it. And another one is a step type solar stills where the water can be desalinated with 45% efficiency. And we, as I mentioned earlier, our approach is 4D through 4E. 4E means this 4E is energy, exergy, and economic and environmental analysis. Uh, in fact, uh, we are also working on mainly solid liquid waste discharge or disposal. As a part of that, uh, solar dryer uh, and solar system is used for 
human waste into fertilizer, converting human waste into fertilizer. We have done some experiment with the synthetic human waste, and uh, then uh, developed. A, I will show you that uh, a toilet, a zero discharge toilet, solar toilet, and in fact, um, the, as I mentioned, another process heat application is the textile uh, effluent treatment. And in uh, Tamil Nadu, um, mainly Tirupur area, you have a lot of textile industries, and they, they uh, reject or uh, emit the effluents into the atmosphere and mainly water um, bodies as well as the land pollution. So, uh, especially um, the rejection of this effluent uh, creates a lot of agricultural because uh, see when it goes into the land soil getting deteriorated and so on the agricultural yields come. So therefore the government of uh, Tamil Nadu put a stringent norms on uh, effluent. So then what happens is uh, when they uh, treat effluent uh, most effectively then the cost of the uh, textile is going up, uh, going up. So which uh, may result in because most of these textile industries uh, export the textile. So then uh, it's very difficult for them to compete, to compete with the uh, textile from other, mainly Bangladesh textiles. Bangladesh, they don't have environmental uh, norm, uh, proper environmental norms. So we came up with a solar based uh, effluent treatment plant for mainly uh, Thirpur area. This is such system. And, uh, and, uh, and we found the characteristics of this. And this, uh, are, uh, this is a uh, place in a, a natural evaporator in a textile industry in Thirpur. And another thing is, uh, as I mentioned in the, one of my slides, that uh, now housing is uh, important. See, food, water, uh, Air, apart from that, the habitat is also important. So, uh, habitat uh, we, uh, nowadays, uh, uh, real estate sector or the housing sector is a highly energy intensive sector and uh, it, it requires a lot of energy. So, it's better to go for affordable net zero energy buildings. And uh, we had a project, uh, I think we have a project with uh, this is an Indo Canadian project. As a part of that, we proposed a, a, an affordable one BHK uh, for uh, housing, uh, one BHK apartment. One of uh, my student who is from architecture is working on that and with the renewable energy integration. Uh, this is again zero discharge. Uh, that's why net zero energy building. We have these wind turbines coupled to the solar panels on the rooftop and then waste, dis waste, waste solid dis disposal is also there. Another view is this. I have not shown pictures because uh, this is uh, not yet published. So therefore, uh, I am giving you only conceptual view. There is a, a panel. This moves with, uh, along, along the sun. If the sun moves here, the, the panels also move on the roof. And still good ventilation to the room. And these are, uh, uh, you can see that they are on the wheel. So uh, you can assemble and disassemble and wherever uh, you want, uh, you can install that. This one. As I mentioned, the, the toilet zero discharge toilet we installed in one of our students hostel, Krishna hostel, and with solar and thermal system for treatment, it is completely zero solar, zero waste uh, discharge toilet. Here, this is developed by IIT Madras, and it's installed, in the, and we have also commercialized this concept. And another one is a, a biomass integration of solar energy mainly for both process heat electricity. You can, uh, this is installed in uh, Vishwabharati University. Uh, we had an indo UK collaborative project on that. Uh, the biogas, which comes from uh, biomass, converted into gas, and then it runs the engine. This gas is supplied to the engine, and it produces electricity, and this is a control system. Some extra will go to the battery, and it uh, rest is, the back side, there is a village. This is the village, actually. This, this part is the village. And um, the village has uh, some 60 houses and uh, it caters the 60 houses. This is an integrated renewable solar, biomass, and some fuel cell uh, for hydrogen production and so on. Uh, this is an electrolyzer producing whenever we have extra energy. Then these are the panels we did initially. The, before installing here, uh, we did it uh, uh, testing at uh, IIT Madras. With, uh, you can see that this, instead of uh, this uh, Floating tanks. We have the uh, this come uh, like a pillow. Biogas is collected. 
was collected in pillows and like uh, cushions and then it's supplied to the engine here the engine was tested and then this control system was developed and so on and another one is that this um, uh, solar mobility mobility is another important thing solar panels are there they can be installed on this um, uh, auto uh, and uh, there are several components involved here and then this control system here and uh, mainly to drive the motor and then um, we have to do structural analysis these are the different components assembled here and then to form uh, an electric vehicle and mild steel tubeless chassis uh, are used and uh, for high performance rotor motors are here i am not going in detail the pictures bar but these are also we have also done a lot of structural analysis because uh, it should be stable under high wind conditions the huge sometimes the drag though it's uh, not very high speed system uh, but uh, still uh, the drag is enormous and uh, sometimes high wind flows are there so in such case how uh, the aerodynamics works in this case uh, that uh, we have seen with the minimum uh, drag force and so on and compared with the uh, conventional this is again one of uh, my uh, ms student did this work and he is now in uh, i think um, you know, earlier he was in uh, tata now he is in bmw he is um, involved in uh, ev electric vehicle design and so on and it was tested uh under real condition road condition and real road load low road and uh, load conditions load means if more many how many people uh, what is the weight that can take and what is the terrain if there is a uh, bumpy terrain how it will act under these conditions what is the torque levels power levels and so on they were testing here as i have already mentioned the it is comparable in economics point of view when you compare this and this is a comprehensive comparison of this and it's a good payback period between 3 to 3.4 to 4 years this one and uh, this a uh, green uh, no greenhouse effect reduction in cost uh, energy cost no low noise and uh, ultimate source of this and this is a uh, one and uh, if you look at the current uh, source wise power power is uh, important and renewable energy is gaining momentum here and uh, there are several challenges uh, mainly how to do uh, this process heat system design and all and though the per capita energy consumption is much lower there is plant efficiency need to be improved and then uh, co2 emitter is a most important thing is a uh, we have to reduce the co2 cost so therefore it's important to go uh, for a process heat industry with solar as i mentioned uh, earlier our uh, approach is 4d with 4e 4d with 4e this 4e is energy exergy environment and economic analysis we have done for uh, uh, both power generation as well as the process heat i will show you the process heat here and there's a scope of this is uh, the uh, various gasification technologies hybrid technologies and uh, subcritical supercritical technologies uh, uh, so technologies and um, introduct uh, we have done this exergy energy analysis uh, uh, so uh, the exergy energy analysis is very important and once you do the availability and availability because some of you are uh, working on this area i want to give some glimpses exergy difference between energy and so on and uh, mainly the energy analysis is a quality and uh, quantity analysis and then uh, exergy is a quant quality analysis energy quality is uh, important and uh, exergetic efficiency is important here but see as far as the first law of thermodynamics is concerned it tells you the conversion of energy one form to another but it doesn't tell us the quality so therefore second law uh, analysis is done and this is in terms of various uh, uh, parameters like exergy availability uh, srg free energy all this these are some of the equations i'm not going into it and then we come up with a exergetic efficiency or effectiveness this is a theoretical maximum available work to accomplish the task to the available work to accomplish the task and as it is given by epsilon and there are several contributors to inefficiencies cause of inefficiency could be mechanical energy which is a friction impacts damping fluid friction line losses fluid leakages uh, flow restrictions fouling and uh, um heat law heat uh, transfer is you know that uh, heat transfer because of convection conduction radiation electrical i square r losses eddy current 
hysteresis uh, and the charge line losses and so on. Availability uh, loss is a combustion, pressure drop, temperature drop, and so on. So these are complex equations for different uh, this thing to analyze the second law analysis mainly for this and there are a lot of complicated equations here. I'm not going in detail only to give, give the glimpses mainly the availability part and you can go through the literature mainly how the energy uh, exergy transfer takes place and uh, how the irreversibility is found in, by these uh, equations. And there's a, it has its own significance in XRG, mainly the availability, because XRG is a quality of uh, energy analysis. So it's very important to come up with this. An object in the XRG analysis to identify the sites where the XRG destruction and losses occur uh, and rank them in the orders of this significant so that we can improve the uh, uh, XRG. And this also allows the attention to be centered on the aspects of the system operations offer greatest opportunity to cost effective improvements. That means how to improve the cost, uh, this one. A typical ranking cycle exergetic analysis is done here based on uh, various things, uh, and uh, it comes out uh, various uh, coal analysis, other analysis, and these are some, some simple equations which can be used. Again, in the same way, we can uh, operate for the vapor power cycle. This uh, uh, methodology is this. So now, oh, sorry. Now I will quickly do that how the 4E analysis uh, or techno-economic analysis can be done for large scale solar thermal aerated uh, pasteurization, uh, pasteurization uh, system, mainly milk industry, as I mentioned one of the process industry quickly. So this is the process industry flow diagram, uh, um, raw milk receiving filters and raw milk storage, chillers and pasteurization and so on and so on distribution system. This is the uh, milk and packaging and other things are here. And this uh, is uh, uh, how do we power, how do we do Fourier analysis uh, for solar thermal air fertilization performance for the dairy industries. Uh, about this is a 4.5, and uh, we have considered one of the milk in the uh, milk uh, processing plant in Chennai uh, that is for, handles 4.5 4 uh, lakh liters LLPD. Uh, that is the lakh. 4.5 lakh liters per day. 4.5 lakh liters per day. LLPD means lakh liters per day. And this is the process, pressurization process. And uh, you can see that this uh, generator and the cooler absorber and the cooling system and condensing here. I'm not going to be detail. These are some of the equations and mainly uh, vapor absorption uh, refrigeration system is used where we are vapor absorption refrigeration system for cooling that, but it requires uh, heat, and that heat is supplied by solar uh, energy. And these are uh, uh, thermodynamic analysis results uh, with the different uh, uh, VR uh, distribution of the energies, and how solar uh, hot water system works here, and all this, and ammonia water, this is uh, uh, ammonia water uh, uh, system, uh, vapor absorption system. And uh, thermodynamic analysis was done and uh, how the output uh, varies with the mainly XRG point of view and uh, what is the input and how it is distributed. These are given here in this. And where are the, where, where the energy destruction rates with the different generator, condenser, evaporator, absorber, pump, VAC, regenerator, pressurizer, and the whole system is this. Yeah. And there's some graphs thermodynamic analysis with the condenser temperature, generator temperature exergetic efficiency of our whole system is formed and um, and then it's uh, completely analyzed with uh, respect to this. So uh, this is a thermodynamic analysis uh, for uh, uh, thermal efficiency of the heat exchanger, mass flow rates, there is some uh, distribution here and uh, it's a, a complete uh, system analysis. This thermodynamic analysis in terms of exergetic analysis with the uh, solar water temperature as the temperature or the exergetic uh, efficiency goes on as we increase the temperature uh, the it changes the efficiency this is a solar industrial process heat system with uh, uh, this solar it is a complete system here and a complex we have also similarly jaggery and all i'm not a, this is solar this part is solar and this is a vapor absorption system for chili purpose and this is uh, some uh, process heat analysis here 
and you can see some uh, what is the area required for solar collectors with the particular collection efficiency and so on and uh, emission and uh, uh, economic analysis has been carried out and it uh, appears to be uh, reasonable as far as the economic analysis there, there is a lot of fuel saving under even uh, different uh, solar radiation conditions that has been studied so uh, these are emission and economic analysis and if you need more information you can contact me later because now it is a uh, very difficult i want to why what is the purpose of showing these slides is at least you will have some idea I mean, if not completely because we don't have time to discuss all this and it's a, a, almost a complete one semester uh, course i'm putting in maximum of 2 hours here so this is what uh, with the different dni how it will vary and the, uh, how the energy can be calculated and so on and uh, we developed an atlas to the entire uh, because uh, wherever the milk industries are there we have made an atlas mainly uh, five locations are considered the best uh, uh, in gandhinagar north in Ch chandigarh central lucknow uh, east kolkata and north uh, east uh, shilla and uh, the one which we was done with um, uh, i chennai the complete analysis was done with chennai and we came up with an atlas how the uh, uh, so what how much area is required for solar energy and uh, solar energy conversion and so on and exergetic and thermal uh, efficiency of a whole solar driven pasteurization is done and its efficiency is 59 to 67% and with some storage 40 to 49% storage under different conditions the system migrates about uh, so many tons of carbon dioxide and so many tons of methane and so many tons of nitrous oxide so uh, then uh, our investment is uh, so many crores here with the delivery of this and the payback period varies from 4 to 12 this uh, was done uh, by one of our uh, master student like a dual degree student uh, it uh, becomes more even more viable uh, if the government subsidy is there so with this uh, uh, we have already discussed this how low temperature high temperature power generation uh, this i have already shown with the different uh, uh, towers and other things because why i want to show this because uh, there is a possibility of integrating solar aided power field water heating also for large scale power generation you can install a solar uh, uh, system to the coal based power plant so that we can reduce the coal consumption the coal consumption can be reduced so then we can have a better because india has a lot of uh, good sunny days and it can produce huge amount of energy so therefore it is a very important to integrate with the conventional uh, conventional thermal power plants there is a uh, again exergy energy the energy performance index and exergy performance index has been calculated and it is proved that uh, the feed water heater at uh, this feed water heater too is a good attractive option we can save a lot of money here and carbon dioxide also so this is a typical this thing and you have seen this uh, one already uh, this is a field analysis how we can do and we also came up with the process heat and power generation across the india uh, made an atlas to come up with the solar power generation this you have seen already uh, with this uh, i end the uh, talk and i hope i have given uh, the enough information about process heat and power generation thank you uh Dear participants, if you have any uh, queries regarding this session, please sort uh, well. Uh, Uh, okay.
I think uh, there's more questions in that mailbox also. Yes, okay, if you don't have any questions, uh, you can yes, write sir. a letter. Yes. And we learn. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Once again, nice delivery by the lecture by accepting our invitation and giving the lecture. Thank you, sir. All the best. Yes, okay, sir. Fine, sir. Wish you all the best for both participants and the organizers. Thank yes, you. Thank you, sir. I'm signing off.